Hey, everybody. Was, welcome to Self-Publishing Podcast. I um, am really out of practice. We haven't recorded <laughs> it's been eight years. In, well, I think that um, I think that we we I think we recorded one episode pr- prior to this week. I think we recorded one episode in the past four weeks. So it was just one thing after another. Like last week, uh, Sean and I were in LA for the McKee Story Conference, which will actually be the next. Depends on when you're listening, but it's the next SPP we record. Will be about that. And um, before that was South by Southwest, and then we had one, and then there was one before that that we didn't do because I think Sean was gone. Yeah, that was when you were gone. So I'm very happy. Best out of month ever for me. Yeah, Dave's never been happier. You know, and, and the danger from unplugging for this long, the danger for me is I come back with 90 something ghouls, but Dave comes back with, I never want to do this show again. Why are we doing this show? What is this all about? I, I haven't, I have slept in every Friday for a month. Uh, I love that a 1 p.m. show is a slept-in situation. No, I, it's so it's so. Awful. It's not really how it's supposed to work. Because he does. He, he, I mean, we just had like a little pre-meeting before this, and Dave looks like he woke up five minutes before it. No, I I have been up since five in the morning today. Really? Yeah. Why did you get I, up? I, so I I slept on average about two hours every day this week. Oh, why? That's yeah. not. Right. Right. We'll talk about that on worst show ever. Worst oh, show ever. <laughs> we have a really packed worst show ever. Yeah, we do. I'm. I almost. If if Sean didn't have to go to the gym, I would say we should record two. Maybe we can record two short ones. Um, I'm down for two short ones. So today, um, today's uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, Story Shop. Like, and it's 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 good, and it's it's live for anybody who's not with us here as we record this. Um, April 4th is going to be the open day. And so we're going to have Seth on. Seth Atwood, a uh, lead developer on Story Shop, to tell the trials and tribulations and final triumphant success story of Story Shop. There's, you know, hundreds of people in there now using it. And, and it's just amazing. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, yeah. And not just, I think, the, the actual product that is Story Shop, but kind of like, what it means going forward, um, you know, how long it took to get there and like the trials and tribulations and how that relates to you as, as an artist, right? Because sometimes you have to throw your work away. Sometimes you have to just, you know, writing Days is rewriting. All the time. <laughs> You're really saying that's all the time, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Besides which, just Seth is family and um, he's just made something beautiful and it's really fun to celebrate this with him. If, if, if I wrote on a typewriter instead of a computer, I would just have the pages automatically feed right into the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> I actually believe that to be true. And speaking of family, just so you can rip it up. <laughs> yep. Speaking of family, uh, do stay tuned at some point to better off undead where I will talk about meeting Sean's entire family. So <laughs> that'll be, that'll be fun as well, including Dave's crush. His mom. Yeah. <laughs> I could uh, tell. I mean, this is the only thing I'll say about worst show ever until worst show ever. But there was a moment where I could clearly tell that Johnny wanted to tell my mother about Dave's drawings <laughs> and didn't. And it was sad. Yeah, I think that Sean was trying to arrange something and I was supposed to take care of something. And Sean goes, and, and I'll take care of my mom. And I said, Dave's already got that. <laughs> so, so, uh, so something cool. So um, I want to go first. I want to go first. So it isn't a strong suspicion he's going to steal mine. (laughs) Oh, maybe. Does it involve um, meat products in any way? (laughs) No, but now I'm super curious. Well, you'll understand in a second. So, um, it, I mean, it is story shop, but it's not the story shops open. It it is a story shop related story. With meat? Yes, you just wait. I'm trying to tell you. I can't believe you're not getting this yet. It's, it's, (laughs) who do we know? Who did we meet? Um, Sean and I were on um, a plane uh, flying to LA for the story conference. Again, we'll tell that story on an upcoming SVP. And uh, if you know us at all or have listened to us on the podcast, you can imagine how (laughs) nauseating that would be. (laughs) Now, thank you. Did I steal yours? No, no, you didn't. Okay, okay. So you can imagine how nauseating that would be to be, um, you know, it's three people wide. So it was me and Sean. I was on the aisle, Sean was in the middle. And then there's this dude who's next to the window and he's got his ear plug, his earbuds in. And he's just like, we, he was like jamming out to his own music, but also just probably trying to ignore us as we constantly just go on and on and on and on for, you know, three hours about everything. Incidentally, that is exactly how I would sit with you two as well. (laughs) Right. It would have been very similar. Would have been very similar. And uh, so toward the end of the flight, after all of this, um, the dude, like, I went to the bathroom and he's like, 
immediately turns to Sean. He's like, he's like, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, wh- who are you guys? No, he's like, what the fuck do you guys do for a living? And he even clearly felt safe swearing because we did. <laughs> and he, um, we're murderers. There, there's a, there's like, I could go into details on this story, but the reason I said meat is the guy, dude's first name, like it's his nickname clearly is beef. No, it's his nickname, but it actually says it on the business card. <laughs> right, his business card says beef. And so the whole weekend we're like about beef. And he's, um, he's involved in some story stuff. I don't want to go into too much detail. But the bottom line is that um, we started telling him about what we do. And we showed him Story Shop as the plane once it landed. And the, the, the dude was just like, oh, like, he just kind of sat. Do you remember? He just kind of sat there with his mouth open like, oh, yeah. what the fuck is this? <laughs> and I think that was my first experience showing story shop to somebody who had never heard of it before was he a writer yes uh well yes a writer yeah what are the odds of that if you're on a plane from florida that would not be the experience (laughs) you had yeah this guy goes back and forth from austin to la all the time it Uh, it was it was really cool we we got to show the austin factor yeah well we got to show um we got to show story shop in public to a couple of people over the weekend on our phones and it was really great. My, my something cool is actually going to be specifically the McKee conference, which will, you know, we are going to talk about um, <laughs> the next episode. Um, but it was really cool just to kind of have a few days of story. And because all those people were story, it was a natural place to, you know, explore story shop. And some of the looks we saw on faces were just, were really unforgettable. We're really cool. Uh, we'll talk in detail about, um, about McKee in the next episode. So I'm going to make my something cool a little sideways and say the movie adaptation. <laughs> I'm going to tell this story on the next show. But yeah. Which, yeah, which is like, I love the movie adaptation. It's one of my favorite movies. Anyway, um, it's written by one of my favorite um, uh, writers, Charlie Kaufman. Wolverine. Directed. <laughs> what did you say? Nothing. I want to know like what you Overrated. <laughs> no. Oh, Charlie Kaufman's overrated? Just kidding. Okay, so Charlie, <laughs> Charlie Kaufman, one of my favorite writers. Spike Jones, one of my favorite directors. And um, it's just, it's kind of a crazy trip. And Adaptation is a movie that I think a lot of a high percentage of this audience would really dig it, but a high percentage of the general audience absolutely would not. And Mm -hmm. I was reading the one stars on our first night in LA um, because they were making me laugh and making me want to read it even more or watch it even more. So Johnny and I watched it in the, um, in the hotel room and it was, it's good, but McKee is a character in it. Charlie Kaufman basically is. That's why we specifically bent over backwards to, to get it. Because it right. wasn't available. Which was the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, it's, it's about the difficulty of adapting this one book. And he writes it about not the adaptation, but about the difficulty of adap- adapting it. And he goes to the McKee Seminar, which is how he gets saved. Anyway. It's a movie about adop- ad- adapting a book, and the movie is the adaptation of the real book. Wait, wait, wait. It's like Inception for writers. Yeah, so I, I've seen it. Rewind this story. Uh, you guys are in a hotel room together watching this movie on that's, what? A okay, a yes. laptop. But I, <laughs> that's, I, that's actually, I was going to make a joke about that. I was gonna, When Sean said the hotel room, I was going to raise my hand and say, yes, folks, we stayed in the same hotel room. But Dave didn't want to let that go, so he nailed it. <laughs> Now I, I'm just I, I can't imagine sitting in a room with some other person Dude, watching. You want to do that with you? Your won't wife. sit with your no. wife and watch a movie. That's true. You're I won't. Not the right person to have this conversation. I'm not we the told, right person for a lot of things. We I'm told a out. bunch of people we met about how to win your marriage and how you want. To <laughs> okay, my I, something cool is we go. what? Oh, my some my something cool is uh, again Legion. They had the season finale the other night. Uh, just great. Uh, I was a little disappointed by the season finale because I was expecting uh, like a resolution on something that I thought was going to be resolved, and it was not. Uh, it was left very, it was left very open. Uh, but other than that, uh, just a phenomenal season. Great show. That's it. No, All I right. want to see that. It's it, it's on my list. Now that the season is over, I can I can binge it. Um, Seth, I know you have something cool. Is it Story Shop? <laughs> Can't think of anything cooler than Story Shop right now. No, me neither. Me neither. That's true in most people's lives. Welcome, welcome, Seth. Thank you. Happy to be here again. Uh, yeah. So um, I don't even remember specifically what was it the last time you were here. Was it um, where where were we in the whole Story Shop adventure? We might have been just heading into beta testing, uh, 
towards the summer. I think it was summer around there. Uh, the I don't original, think anyone yeah. was in the app yet. It may have even been longer than that. <laughs> no, yeah, no, but it was, it was really predating anyone, including us being in the app. Yeah, so we've had we've had a, a, a rocky road, um, and I think one of the the parallels that we like to to draw here is um, well, actually, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. So, um, Seth, what do you want to say, like right at the eve of unveiling this? Because it's been kind of amazing to watch Seth over the last year and a half that we've done this. Um, I've seen every emotion that a human can have um because <laughs> <laughs> well it's, it's true right like haven't you just been dragged all over the, the the map with this um so <laughs> yeah it's it's definitely been i mean it's been a challenge it's been uh, a long journey uh it's been really exciting though um I'd say that Story Shop is the longest duration I've ever been involved with a project before uh, it was open to the public. And so it's been a very long gestation period. <laughs> you know, I've, I've, uh, I, I think the longest time frame I've had on another project of a similar scale was maybe six months. And realistically, because we planned for so long, we went through the Kickstarter, we went through two development cycles, um, you know, it, Realistically, we're at about 18 months here or more. So uh, it's been, that's enough time for a person naturally to change, but this has been, it's been a particularly transformative experience in and of itself. It's, but it, it, it's been great though, uh, as we'll get more into, like uh, there was kind of a, a fork in the road that happened last fall. And, you know, I like it, it, it was a big moment that, uh, that I, I don't have any regrets about that it, it went the way it did. It did not go as expected, but uh, I feel like, you know, I'm better positioned now for the next big thing in a way that I, that I wasn't before this started. Like this is, I've been chasing carrots on the end of sticks for so long. Uh, like this is the first time I think I might actually catch it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, um, and, and that's huge, but it, like, yeah, this is, this is a, it, it has a magnum opus kind of feel to it right now. Just it's, but I, I put everything into it. And so far, like, we now have several hundred people on board, uh, the Kickstarter backers, and the feedback has been nothing but outstanding. And, and that's just great because, you know, I've, been, I've just been a steward through this whole process of this community's vision for what their writing app should be. And now that they have it and they say, yeah, this is it. And like, we can't wait to see more. It, it's just what an exciting time. I, I tell uh, in my client work, I always explain that the day we launch the website is not the day this project is finished. That's the day this really starts. And so, you know, this has been a long, a long ramp up to our starting point that's happening right now. So, so yeah. if I could just put a finer point on what Seth just said, in case, uh, just to be clear, like Story Shop is, is open. Um, the Kickstarter backers are, are in there. They are using it. They are building worlds. Seth, you, you had some stat on how many worlds, like hundreds of worlds created? I don't there was 336 over the weekend. <laughs> that we got the email. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're up worlds in Story Shop. Like, I, we haven't had time to really do much data analysis on, like, we don't have many charts and graphs yet, but, but we do know that there's, that, that's just exciting, right? Like, there's entire universes, like, being birthed inside this database that, like, it's like the matrix just flying by and the... Uh, there's so much happening like it, it to be able to unleash this much creativity in people. It's, it's yeah, great. It's really I, I, I know. Um, I, I'd actually thought that this would come later in the, in the show. Well, actually, do you mind before you start telling the story? Cause it sounds like a little rabbit hole thing. Yeah. I just want to just say, cause this is the, anybody who's like, Oh, I want to know about story shop. Um, get story Uh, if you listen to this app after April 4th, it's, live available to buy um uh we aren't you know go there and, and if you're before that then you can join the list and we'll let you know the second it's live so that's that's where you go but anyway and for somebody just tuning in for the first time did we explain what story shop is Ooh, good uh that's a good, good, good boiling down <laughs> yeah question, i, I guess we just assume important. the whole world knows what story shop is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a great question um all right you know what that, that i'm glad dave asked that actually so we, we can tell this whole narrative from the beginning um, well, the cliff notes, at least anyway. So uh, um, I don't know. This is maybe two and a half years ago. This goes all the way. Back. It goes back a while. 
um, the very first thing is, you know what, it'd be kind of cool to build an app someday. <laughs> I think that was the, just the very genesis of that. And, um, and then once we realized that, okay, someday we will build an app, what does that look like? And the part of our process that gave us the most trouble by far was just not trouble, but if we could systematize this, we could write stories faster. And that was the beats process, right? It was really born like that. I mean, we've just, as a company, been kind of doing it forever since our inception. So what would that look like? Um, and then quite separately, Seth, whom I met several years ago um, in Vegas, <laughs> um, of all places. <laughs> What happens in Vegas did, yeah. did not stay in Vegas. Yeah, it was it was very um, it was a lucky trip for me. Um, Seth and I immediately vibed, but we didn't work together. Um, several years later, he, he I think he just emailed me Seth out of the blue and said, "Hey, I've got an app idea. Can I pick your brain for an hour?" Is that about right? Yeah, I I had um, I was in the very early kind of uh, discovery stages of another idea that I had that would facilitate um, kind of like. Uh, he crowdsourced editing for all kinds of things. And I, one of my user stories, one of my user personas for the app was the writer. And I was like, well, I, I know a writer. <laughs> Let me call him. And uh, yeah. So, yeah, so and we, Sean said, forget the thing you're doing. I, I, I actually, he was also curing cancer. And Sean said, forget that. We've got, <laughs> we've got this other thing. Well, and, the and kind of the thing Sean glossed over was the fact that a story shop was kind of born of frustration of us working together uh, in writing together in, in trying to get these things uh, working. And, and it just didn't work with the systems we had in place. Yeah, we, 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 had a, we had a great system, but we didn't have the tools to execute the system. So it broke along the way. And, and that's silly when you're trying to, we're not just trying to, you know, create stories. We're really trying to build a business around the stories that create. And so that means we need better tools. And so um, Seth was, uh, you know, he, he basically told me all about his idea, which I loved. Um, the, the Sterling and Stone app did not come up until the, like we were hanging up. And I said, wait, <laughs> I said, before you hang up, I have an idea for one it. more thing. Yeah, it was a one more thing. So I told him very quickly the idea and I don't know how much time passed, but I got another email a little bit later that just said, I can't stop thinking about that idea. That sounds really cool. Um, and then we had, that was, I think the timing about this was our original in-person thing that we did that was the, um, the colonist session uh, that was uh, Kickstarter fulfillment for Fiction Unboxed. We were gonna have this little event. Um, it was the precursor to the summit. It was a year earlier. And, and Seth came down to Austin and we were talking about, which then was called Master Beats, <laughs> right? Um, and we decided that Master Beats would cost about $80,000. And so we were going to have a Kickstarter. Now, Seth had to talk us into the Kickstarter. Do you remember this, Seth? Or was like, no. I do. Yeah, you, you guys were just coming out of a Kickstarter. And now I understand why uh, there was some resistance. Because it's a real challenge. And you're, you're really accountable to a lot of people. And that's important to this group. That's why I like Yeah, it's here. like you, you take people's money for something that doesn't exist yet. Um, and there's something about that that makes me uncomfortable. There's something about the the accountability and that that it's really stretched out for a long time. And I don't like marketing stuff for a month straight. I hate it. So we kind of flipped the rules a little bit here. And we said, if we're going to do this, then we're going to do it as the only way we can. We're going to tell people it's $80,000. And if it funds, we'll build it. And if it doesn't fund, then we're not going to build it. And that was a stressful <laughs> month because we meant it. Um, you know, if it didn't make 80 grand, we were not going to build this app. And that was kind of heartbreaking because we really wanted to. And for a long time, it looked like it wouldn't. It just kind of hovered there for a long, long, long time. But then, of course, you people are just amazing. And right there at the very end, um, the SPP people came in and it funded, it funded at $84,000. And then work began. So, uh, Seth, how was that? We, 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 we still haven't said what it is yet, have we? <laughs> um, well, well, actually... No, what I guess we the haven't. fuck is this thing that these guys are? Why do I care? So well, it's tuned out. It's changed a lot. Is the thing? It even changed during development. It, it changed. I, I, I'm just gonna like. I'm gonna wait till the end of the episode. So, maybe finally, he'll, Sean will explain <laughs> what it does. I, I think this is great. It just shows that we're in kind of different worlds because in the in the startup and development world, it's like it's all about the elevator pitch. And so to hear Sean's like long form 
elevator pitch. It's like, how tall is this building? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a narrative. <laughs> well, okay, so it's, it's our story planning software. Um, but what we really want to do is, is we wanted to change the way we wrote, but really hopefully we're changing the way a lot of people write. And it's built on collaboration, but by no means you need to be a collaborative writer for it. Um, I would say 90% of the people using it right now are solo writers. Um, but for me and Johnny and me and Dave, we can write in real time. We can leave each other comments. Um, we can, you know, move, you know, our, our, our beats. The character creation stuff is fantastic. Right now, what exists is, is not Story Shop what it will be. It's the very first version, which is Story Shop Planner. And originally, Story Shop Planner was just Story Shop. Uh, but we realized early on that we needed a, an actual writing element in there. We needed, we needed an environment that a writer never wants to leave. So a writer can design her characters, um, outline the story, get all of that, and then eventually, not quite yet, we're not ready for this, but we'll eventually in Story Shop be able to transition from that outline to the actual draft to a you know, publishable, publishable output. You know, we're gonna have that ebook that they can then upload to all of the booksellers. Um, and we're gonna be able to stay all in the native environment, and that's so important. Um, so right now it's Story Shop Planner, and Story Shop Planner, uh, you can completely do your outlines. You can do characters. We have elements. Um, and I'll let Seth describe how all of that works. Um, but, but yeah, basically, we, we, we got the green light to build this. And then I think that's when the really hard part started. So, Seth, what were some of the big, giant hurdles there? Um, just as far as, uh, are you asking, like, what were the technical challenges in making it happen? Or? Well, I know what that. Went wrong? Well, I know that we had <laughs> we had this such big a Dave question. question of what is that? That's the question I get every time we talk. Um, we, you have this big vision of this is what we want to produce for writers, and then the reality yeah. of making that happen and all the steps along the way. And I think the real parallel here that a lot of um, people listening will just immediately understand what this is like. Uh, and we may as well just start with the disaster and kind of t talk around that. But you know. Anybody who's listening to this for any period of time has heard Dave tell stories about how he gets, you know, 80% um, into a book and he hates what he has and he throws it away and he starts over. And that's a really painful process, but he couldn't get to that point in the narrative without having to throw away what he had because he didn't really understand the story. He was basically learning the story so that he could tell the story to himself again better. Um, so that same thing happened to us with Story Shop. Yeah, it's um, there. There are so many small things that come up when you try to make a big idea happen. You know, it's uh, like when when the funding actually finished. You know, before that happened, we could only get but so invested in the shape of things. Then once we knew it was time to be a reality, it was like, well, the, let's really go deep into what this is going to be now. And so we just spent a ton of time on on planning and figuring out uh, a lot of people well this was more for writer when we opened the questionnaires up um, but there was community input and feedback from very early on so it was really just conversational uh, and then we last summer made it to to beta we got something where you know in hindsight i think it was premature as we can see like we have something awesome now much later than last summer, <laughs> you know, so that there's a lot of evidence in that. Uh, but yeah, it was, um, we had something very specific in mind. We made our best attempt at it, but it wasn't until we could really get other people on it that we were able to see that it wasn't good enough. And that's such a hard thing to decide, especially as, you know, as a perfectionist to some degree, it's like, um, it's important that it, when you rely so much on user feedback, it's terribly important that you have the, that it is feedback and you have to have something like tangible or something needs to exist to have feedback about it. And so once it existed, yeah, the feedback just confirmed and we, it, we quickly found out there were some limitations on, um, like we had hit a dead end, basically. We, we got to where we couldn't get past the uncanny divide to what Story Shop needed to be with what we already had. The biggest thing, though, that I'd say that led to that was, if I recall, it was really beta and writer started to 
shape up around the same time, this idea of writers started to become a reality around the same time we were going into beta. And it, Seth, question. can you draw a finer point than I did about, you know, once writer is out, how it will differentiate and kind of that process that we've talked about with where you don't really have to leave the environment? Yeah, that, so that's that's what came out of it, of, of everything was realizing like, this planning tool that we've been planning does not solve the promise like that we originally made to, to help you write better stories faster, like as much as we wanted it to ultimately, right? It's like, this is great, but at the end of it, uh, we found like, okay, now I've planned my work. I have these outlines with hyper interconnected, like, cause as you're writing outlines, just like it, when you're uh, hashtagging or at mentioning people, like on Twitter or social media, you can at reference your characters and you can hash reference your elements. And so you're building the, these inner, these beats that make everything right at your fingertips. And it's like, okay, now I'm ready to write. So let me export this file and download it to my hard drive and open this other program and import it and like reshuffle it. And there's so much time lost in that. There's so much, like it's disruptive to the flow and to do all this work to, to get people all like, zipping and ready to go and then end up in a platform we don't control that we don't have any um, creative input on we can't be opinionated about how the process uh, should happen you know, that we just um we didn't have enough control in that domain and we quickly found that out and uh yeah at, along with that we were in beta and where we were like everything just it became quickly apparent like um we need to start over in order to achieve all of this. But yeah, once writer's in place, we're then, um, you know, imagine having, instead of like this export file and bring into new software, you have a side-by-side -side view. You just like, you click one of your beats and like zoop, now you're in the writing view and they're side-by-side -side tracking each other. And it's like, oh yeah, is is my protagonist left or right-handed? Click the name, zoop, they slide out. Oh yeah, left-handed, zoop, it all goes oh, away. Yeah, and yeah, Seth, we didn't actually even talk about that, the the, the indexing, which is kind of the, the, I don't know, the special sauce of Story Shop, right? So hashtags and and ads, like how how does that work? And we'll do we'll do a little um, screen, I mean, you can, maybe this is even the time to do it. We can do a little like screen demo or or whatever to, to, to visualize some That's of this. That's rough for people just cool. listening to audio though. Yeah, we can describe what's going on. I think it's I think it's a cheat to people who watch on YouTube to not do it at all. So basically, what you're describing right now about adding and ha ha hashtagging and stuff, we can describe that as as we do the demo, um, because it really is kind of magical. Like it's basically when beta came out, the 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 one that that we were just saying a, a while ago ended up getting tossed out. It 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 had um, the functionality, but the way Seth always describes this stuff to us is like I I it's like connect connect all the wires and then put the veneer on it, then put the casing on it and make it, make it pretty. And it was, it didn't get to the make it pretty stage in addition to kind of not being what we envisioned. And it's just so beautiful now. Like it's just, a, it's a, it's a, it's delightful to work. In. It is delightful. You can see the look on people's faces when you show it, show it to them because they may be expecting something, I don't know, nice, but then once they see it, there's, I don't know, it's, it's so immediately apparent. It really is wonderful. So what do you think about a, a little screen demo to describe some of this? And I can narrate, I can do play-by-play -play for the audio listeners if you want. Or did you want to finish describing some of the, the details of it to begin with, to frame it? Uh, would you like for me to share my screen and give the tour, Johnny? Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Um, I think it's important to, to emphasize, like to just bring some of these pieces together because, you know, we mentioned Story Shop Writer. It began as Story Shop Planner. Um, Sean was talking about at and hashtagging and interconnecting. And I think the bottom line on all of that is we wanted to create um, a story planning, a story creating environment. Honestly, it's great that it's called Story Shop because originally it was going to be Master Beats because beats are our story elements. And it's just so much more than that. It is a shop for creating your stories. The idea is you go into this, you use it, and that's all you need. But you know, when it's ready, when when Story Shop Writer's component is ready, you'll be you'll be creating your story in Planner. You'll toggle over like Seth was describing and be able to write. And then when you're done, you can compile in you know whatever format you need. And and it it's it, it's all you need. It's the only thing, and it's designed by writers for what we need. Like we're we're full time people. We produce a ton of content and many by writers for writers. Exactly. Right. 
I'm not just a member. I'm, I'm not just the president. I'm a member. I'm also a client. Okay, so Seth is sharing his screen here for you audio people. I'm going to attempt to do the uh, the the play by play for you. Um, you you basically select your world to begin with. The whole idea is framed around the idea of what is the the world that you're working in. So um, Seth has the land of Oz as the demo here, but we would also have like a beam world. Uh, um, you know, the CI would have a we have like ninety worlds already. <laughs> right. CI yeah, would have the Karma Police and Yesterday's Gone worlds, and so everything is within a world, and you can share worlds too. So like Sean and I share the worlds that we're working on, and. Dave and Sean would share um, the worlds that they're working on and that sort of thing. Yeah, and if I could just uh, take a minute to say the reason we're in the land of Oz is because we know it's important for people to have some examples. So the way it works now is anybody, when they sign up for Story Shop, they get read-only access to this land of Oz world. And we're going to continue to work on it and make it better and more comprehensive. The land of Oz is great because it's, uh, it's public domain at this point and we have over... 20 books of, of content available to us. So we're going to have somebody continuing to flesh this out. It'll be a showcase for new features as they appear in the app. Uh, it'll be the base for all of our tutorials and whatnot, at least as a starting point. So just that I wanted to explain the significance of what, like why we're in Oz here in particular. Sean did great work uh, getting all these characters in place. So yeah, speaking of characters, if we go so In the left hand into... uh, nav bar, there are three basic categories. Once you're in a world, there's characters, um, characters, uh, elements, which is like locations. Well, we'll get to that. Um, and the stories, which are actually where you create your, your beats and then you can toggle over once writer is done and do the, the creating. That's where the stories live. So for instance, stories may have several books in the world, you know, book one, two, three, four, five, or whatever. So Seth was in um, uh, characters and he's clicking over to, to Dorothy from the nav bar um, or from the all characters pane. And I think maybe we mentioned that like you can favorite characters because otherwise all your characters are in the nav bar and you may only want like your top few characters. So you can drag them around by priority and you can um, hit the little star in the upper left hand corner to make them a favorite. And when you've done that, then they basically pop up in the left hand nav bar for like quick reference basically. And you know, delete them if you want that sort of thing. And once you go in into any character, there's um. You know, you, you, you have like a banner image, like a, like a, a Facebook has a, the big banner that you can put behind your, your you know, your, your picture and you can upload things, uh, upload whatever pictures you want to give you the visual reference. And then since one of the things we've talked about a lot is casting characters, that's one of the things that we, that we do is um, you can put up characters for like your, your, your character's image as well. So there's like their, their background image and then their actual character. So in this one, he's got the little girl who would be Dorothy. But if we were casting, we'd be like, okay, well, this character would be this actor, then we could upload you know, pictures of those. And there's also, if you, a little further down on the main page, there's a, um, just more photos, like if you want more photos. And it looks kind of Facebook-y, like a little bit, which is the intention. You know, what are the, the photos that, this, that, um, that you know, represent this character, or, or just so you understand what that character is like? And that's what Seth is clicking through right now in the demo. Um, oh, do you want to mention character DNA, Johnny? I'll go back into a character. I'll give uh, I'll give Sean character DNA actually, because that's his term. Yeah. So it's so Sean's character baby. DNA is just um, it's it's a bank of 350 questions that we ask our characters. We don't ever ask them all 350 because no one needs to know that much about their character. But uh, but we know a lot about our characters, and there's this really cool thing. I think Seth spent an entire day programming this little dice that can turn, which is really cool. Uh, but it's like right now it says, uh, "What well, one word best describes you?" So you can answer that. You can also click the die, and it'll get you know uh, again. So this roll, it'll roll again for you, basically. Right. So then you can. Um, uh, it's got a character summary below. That's a DNA. Um, you've got relationships and character attributes, which is really cool. So if you put like Dorothy is friend of Scarecrow, when you're in the Scarecrow's page, it automatically knows that she, the Scarecrow is a friend of Dorothy. So if you say someone is your mother, then when you're on that, um, uh, when you're on the mother, it'll say the other character is the daughter. So it's raw and automatic there. So again, think of the like social network uh, comparison here, you know? Um, so if you are in, if you're on Facebook and you're, you know, you indicate that your spouse is this person, then you know, you're, you're connected. You're connected. You're able to flip from one profile to the other, and that's basically what um, 
you know, Seth has here, he can say the Wicked Witch of the West was cousins with Glinda the Good Witch in Oz. And he's um, at mentioning and at hashtagging stuff so that like right now, the Wicked Witch of the West, who's the main character, is cousins with Glinda, but that's a link. And if you click on that, you can click to Glinda. And then, um, Seth, do you mind muting? Your keyboard is like Tammy's keyboard. Like, <laughs> um, Got it like, off. Thunder like, the Barbarian. But right. she's in she's in Oz, and Oz is a link. So like that matters. That's you know, um, you can click Oz, and it'll give you the what you've entered on Oz. And it's that way through all the character summary and description as well. Like there's um, a paragraph that says you know after Toto bites Almira Gulch, you know this they're based on the books. If you've only seen the movies, that's not going to make sense. But like those are linked. Those who those characters are. What um, the Yellow Brick Road is linked, so that you can have descriptions of the Yellow Brick Road. Um, and then you're able to just click back and forth between elements and characters in the world. Basically, everything yeah. in your story is linked to everything else. So right. at any point in the writing process, you have these references. Um, you're never lost. It's it's very elegant. Um, I mean, do, yeah, Dave. Do the relationships change? Like if you have a brother and sister and it says siblings underneath it or brother or sister, uh, but then you click on somebody else who's like the cousin, it would say cousin instead of brother or sister. So they, they, they basically are, are these things like friend and stuff, are those all relational? They're, uh, they're, re they're reciprocal for yeah, some of them. See so, the, do you see the drop down menu, Dave? Yeah. Oh. So like if you choose sibling, so if you said, you know, Joe is a sibling of, of Tom, then, and you're making that in Joe's, then if you go over to Tom, you haven't changed Tom, but if you go over to Tom, then it'll indicate that they're all siblings as well. It'd be oh, like cool. Joe is his sibling. But for, um, for ones that they're reciprocal rather than, than identical like um so if i said that uh you know somebody is somebody's daughter then if you click to the daughter it has automatically added <sighs> the other one as the mother or the parent i guess it would be it would be child and parent but like that sort of thing is baked in as well and it's growing too i mean one of my very very favorite things about story shop is that we don't quite know what it is or what it will be and already um you know uh, i mean we meet really regularly okay well what's the next version of this character is going to look like right because we're already thinking about new things that we can add to the character design pages that'll really elevate them um, so it's just a matter of doing it but kind of the magic of this model too is that it's live on the web so i mean i i, I had the joy of um being in story shop really early and I, I would use it and new things would just appear all the time magically like oh now there's this feature that wasn't there before and you know people who are in the story shop environment will notice that that they're just gonna get new things all the time. Okay, well, now there's new questions that we're adding to the character DNA, and now there's new templates is probably a, a big one. Um, Seth, that's the number one requested feature, right, is, is templates. So we're, we're working on getting that in, and that's something too where you'll, it'll just be there one day, but then, you know, there won't just like, be templates, there'll be new ones. But and when now, Sean and I went to the McKee conference and learned some new story stuff, Sean then turned around to Seth and said, hey, here's some more stuff we gotta add eventually you know to the character stuff because we need this for characters and so that sort of thing like uh, in the trenches experience working with the app and creating more stories is going to result in new features that just appear and user voice seth do you want to talk a little bit about user voice dave, dave was uh, had a question oh yeah dave well everything's kind of moving slow on this screen is that because you're also doing video seth yeah, it's actually. Yeah, I'm on a I'm on a poor rural interconnection, uh, rural okay. internet connection. It's like and then seven, through seven Zoom, megabits, so. it's so yeah, zippy. I'm, I'm really pushing it here. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's not super zippy on my phone, but when I'm at home, it's it's super fast. So, do you want to hit the other major elements here before we close down the screen share and? Um, yeah, yeah, we should. So, so th there's elements, and then if you go lower, we've got we've got stories, <laughs> and that's kind of where the magic happens. That's where we've been outlining and putting our beats. And really, this is just however you organize your story. It's, it's kind of different for everybody. Um, the way it's built, there is infinite nesting. So you could do act one, and then chapter one, and then you could do every little beat. I tend to not do that. Um, the way that the, the sample world that you can look at in there, um, it, it's just basic act one, act two, act three. Um, and, and there's little things that just the more we use it, the more we realize, oh, we need this one thing. So one real simple thing that Seth did is you can very simple with a click, just change the color of your different boxes um, to organize them differently. 
Um, it's all drag and drop. You know, if you like that, drop, yeah. if you like that corkboard feature and in, in Scrivener, it's it's sort of similar to that. Um, and you can change the color too. So when Sean and I were doing this, we were like, you know, what any new ones I add will be in blue. Like it was that sort of thing. Um, and you can drag and drop to nest or unnest or tab or like there's all sorts of keyboard shortcuts. This is maybe a little too granular. Um, but, and then just elements, I guess, and maybe this is to close it out. Elements is everything else. So elements is locations. Um, elements is um, uh, like if you were writing, a, like Andy Weir said he's gonna invent new physics for his next book, right? So like physics in my world might be an element or a kind, a bit of physics or just about anything you would need to keep track of. That's not a character thing and that's not like actual story is there as well. And then, I, I got to say one of, one of my favorite things is like how you, you hyperlink between things like right here, the wicked witch of the West sends flying monkeys. You can click on flying monkeys. Like there's so many times where like, I am like writing something uh, in what we're using now. And like I, it, with, I'm planning it out or writing and I'm like, Oh fuck. And I, I don't remember what that is, or I don't remember details about it. And just to be able to click it and see it so easy. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing. It's going to make planning so much easier. And so like right now when I don't know something, I got to go back and find it in a book and my memory sucks. So I don't even know where it is. In oh the book. my God. I just yeah. make Sean do it. I know that's my job. <laughs> it's so hard. I cannot wait for this to be done. But part of it is we're writing outside of our planning environment. Like once we can do the same, like that'll yeah. be so no, it's it's so so elegant, and the thing is, we're just so committed to this software. I mean, we we did build it for us and for the community, and now like we're just we're we're doubling down. And I don't know if that got lost in the story, but it is worth mentioning just just because it it it's like for those of you who don't know, Seth has a story shop tattoo. Um, Seth, I, mean, I think you can close the demo. By the way, I think we're done with the demo. If that, if that helps. <laughs> It's no, a full that, that's commitment. It's yeah. commitment. It's a full forearm <laughs> story shop tattoo. So that tells you that he's in it. But we are too. I mean, financially, we we collected all the money for um for this app through Kickstarter, built the app, spent every single cent of that money, and then realized this app is not good enough for the people who gave us money. We have to start over. And it was embarrassing and it was financially devastating because we owed these people beta back in summer. And this is late September when we basically had to decide, you know what, we have to start over. We have to throw this all in the trash and we have to say we're sorry and go back down. And this whole time people were like, when is it coming out? When is it coming out? When is it coming out? And we had to go radio silent because- We should have collected more from Kickstarter. We should have <laughs> like 120,000. No, we- well, I mean, just because it, it was such a financial hit. It's like, all right. Bye bye. It was a huge hit for us, but we were committed to doing the right thing and to um, to delivering a really amazing experience for everybody. Because what would suck more than making them wait all that time, making them wait all that time, and then giving them something shitty? Like, well, no, and, obviously we can never do that. And for I mean, for you authors out there, if you're getting like, you know, if you're eighty percent done with a book and you know it's not the right book, you know, maybe it's time to to, to do it over. I mean, it's hard, it's painful, but this is forever stuff. And um, I mean, the, the pure joy of building this app, I mean, Seth did 99% of all the work here, but we did a little like in conceiving and talking and dreaming. And um, it, it has been a beautiful, magical process. And it's one of my, I love all the books that we have made. I mean, what we've done as a company, I think is, is really fantastic and I'm really proud of it. But this, instead of building a world, we built a world maker. And I'm just so stupidly proud of that. And I feel so fortunate that Seth has come into our lives and helped us to make this for everybody. So guys, if um, you are listening on audio and you want to see that little visual uh, demo that, that we just talked through, uh, and slash or the official sort of uh, story shop tour. So it's, they're, they're actually gonna overlap a little bit but um, it's more on point, the, the, the story shop tour, because Seth is describing as he's clicking. Um, we, there's a page that's sterlingandstone.net slash story shop that will show you both of those videos. So if you want to go check those out later, you still can. Um, so actually, we had a question, and this is actually, this is something that uh, I was wondering too um, about the, the web app nature of it. Is, it. is it a web app? And the answer is yes. And it's going to remain a web app, but um, 
what does that mean in terms of like practical use for the, the writer who, and what does it mean for Dave who will not write on anything that's web-based? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's an interesting question to ask of a web app. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I well, think my, that reserva- my reservations with the web app are like, uh, like I, I want to be, I want to be able to write uh, wherever I am, and I won't always have an internet connection. Uh, that, that's my main concern. Like right now, like I, you know, if I if I go out to a restaurant or something, I like being able to write in the thing that I'm doing now, and I don't have to worry about an internet connection because it's there. It's saved locally on my computer. How and, often do you actually do that, though? A lot. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to make a joke about the the constant writer who needs to eat while he's going to a restaurant. But well, but yes, but fair no, question. No, I like to no, I like to get out of my house, and you know, I I don't go to coffee shops, so I go to a restaurant, and that's I I need to get out of my environment sometimes to write. Need opium dens and redact. Uh, I'm going to let. They had opium dens. I, I would live there. <laughs> I'm going to let Seth answer the question in the way I believe you want it answered. But I, I just like to offer as a real pro for web app is. Um, I didn't bring my laptop when we traveled and I found myself like wanting to, we, this happened a bunch. Like we'll be at a meeting, Sean will be on a walking meeting and we'll be like, Oh, what was that thing? What was that thing? And the ability to pull it up on a smartphone or if you just have a tablet or if, if you, you work, like I work on a desktop and it'd be like, well, I'm downstairs working on my wife's uh, laptop and well, shit, the story shop files or that's upstairs. The, the portability of it, the, the fact that it is web-based is a huge plus for what you're talking about. But I also see the other point. Well, there, yeah, there's a couple of considerations. There, there are so many pros to a web app that um, you could enumerate them for a while. Like, in particular, the thing that comes to mind right off the bat that we have real-time backups running on StoryShop. Like, and they're, they go back forever since we've opened. Like, it, it in a catastrophic situation, which we don't think any will happen, but in some kind of catastrophe, we could go back and pick out the thing that you made the errant change to three months ago. It's like, it's all there historically. Email Seth asking. Yeah, I just, yeah, exactly. (laughs) In fact, the the data, it's it's like, it's, it's, it would be incredibly difficult to do. The point being though, it's, we can hit a restore button. We have a big restore button and real time backups happening. But well, that I would have been helpful to, when I lost my... Uh, there's no save button, right? I mean, because there's no save button in Story Shop. We're get, right now, there's a saving indicator. We're going to get rid of that soon, too. Like it's, it's a, you'll get errors if there's a problem, and you'll be notified if a save is in progress when you because try to close the Because the saves the are constant. It just tells you that it's saving constantly. Yeah, and it's, it's too much noise. We're going to tone that down, but, um, but we need to have other... like the, Our errors messages need to be better if anything goes wrong with saving. But the, the point being, though, in the scenario which you described, Dave, there comes a point which you're back online, right? And, yes. And that's, that's what we target for. So there's a big difference between files on your hard drive and an app that you could go into the Serengeti with and work for six months and what the scenario you're describing, which we, we can cover. We're not there yet, but we'll soon be at a place where we'll tell your web browser or your device or whatever, like, just hold on to this until we're online again. And at that point, the outer limit, we run into uh, limits in the browser and in your devices. Like the browser at some point is going to say like, yo, dude, we only store like eight megs for any given domain. We're not going to let you. Megs. <laughs> you. I don't know the exact amount. I think it is around five to 10 megs though. But we have a lot of space to hold things uh, temporarily. And then as soon as you're back online, Story Shop will automatically sync up and it goes into our real-time backup stage for, it's, it's basically yeah. like Dropbox for all your stuff real-time, but it's better than Dropbox. It seems so that, like, um, and we'll have that soon. better than Dropbox? Because <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, uh, the goal is to have that stuff in place, just so you guys know, around the time we release Writer, we'll have our first foray into that, because particularly with the writing and the beats, those are the most important things to, we think, be able to, to have the, the, the full saving, but other stuff too. But, um, and, and that's all the, the target is midsummer. So. Um, and, and one of the things that we've talked about, cause, cause remember too, like this is another huge benefit of a web app is, um, you, your, your current writing program, assuming it's not a web app, which basically they really aren't, um, like you, you have to, 
Unless you're writing yeah. Google Docs. Right, unless you're writing in Google Docs. If there's an upgrade, you have to go get the upgraded version and blah, blah, blah. And I don't know about you, but I usually am like, fuck it, I just want to get writing and then I don't actually get around to it forever. Um, but we, is it can, you know, like new features and then they're just, they're just there. They're just and there. One of the ones that I know that we sort of talked about, not immediately, I mean, I don't know where it is, but at some point, like, you know, it won't have the being in a browser feel. Like it's not... It, it, it will technically be a web app, but it won't look like a web app. Like you, you just, that's behind a curtain. Right. Yeah, the word for that is native. Like we will have native versions of StoryShop that all connect to the same database. That's the key thing. There is only one StoryShop database. I mean, it's redundant and backed up everywhere, but there's only one. So when we have your download from the Apple store or download from the Google Play store or download from to your hard drive, this application, this is what Slack does. This is what Trello does. This is, like, this is what a lot of the tools we already use do. There's one database and then you make native applications. And they're just a little more slick for mobile. We're gonna like, it, it'll feel like an iPhone. If you're on an iPhone, it'll feel like Android if you're on Android. Right now it feels like story shop, no matter where you are. So that's the only difference that'll come yeah, in. Really Some performance games. That. Um, one of the things that is really, I think this is key for us and I think for a growing segment of our audience is um, collaboration. So the, the ability of, of Sean to work on something and then hand off to me. So we're, we're not, I know that this is like a down the road thing, but um, you know, a, a, like in Google Docs, there's live collaboration, right? Like you have the red cursor, I have the blue cursor. But um, for now, like the, the fact that it's saving and then Sean's out and I'm in is, is huge. Because um, just without going into a lot of specifics, because it would bore you guys, um, we I was talking with, uh, I get a Slack from Tammy. You know the story I'm going to tell? Oh, I do. Okay. So I get a Slack from Tammy and she's like, okay, we got a problem with this book that's just about, like I'm, I'm editing it and um, there's a problem. Like this isn't believable. Like there's this big event that happens off camera. You need to have it on camera. Like you need to have this scene. And I'm like, okay, but I feel like, there was enough on camera. I know there's a little bit of whatever. And we went back and forth. And so eventually I was like, fuck, okay, fine. She's right. Like, why would we have an editor who's looking at these things unless we were going to pay attention? So I, I just grumbling go in there and I'm like, fine, I'll write the fucking scene. So I go in and I'm like, okay, there's chapters missing here. And then I, it took me a while to figure it out. And I slacked Tammy and then I slacked Sean who had it before Tammy and said, um, so these chapters with these, did you look at this version, the version without these chapters? And they're like, oh yeah. I'm like, well, no wonder you think shit's missing. It's missing. And the, the bottom line is that somewhere in the, the, the collaboration system that we're using now, where we're having a Scrivener file and it's syncing through Dropbox, two files got lost, not an entire file. So it's not like- Which is way at. scarier because if you're missing a whole file, you know to go look. If you're missing two, two files from within your file- Two chapters. And, and the, 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 the thing is, this was like so insidious because it's like we were being deliberately sabotaged because basically there was a small gap. There was a small thing that happened off camera and this particular deletion made the gap wider. And so it very, very, I could have argued for it. I could have stood up and said, no, 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 it's good enough. I swear to God, which by the way, they agreed. Like after they saw the chapters, they're like, oh, this is fine. So it could have gone to press that way and we never would have known. It just would have gone up and there would have been two chapters missing because the collaborative link is broken. I told Dave the story. He just said, that's why you number your chapters. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but that was just like, what the fuck? And that has happened a lot. Not missing chapters, but files that are broken, files that are clearly wrong, files that refuse to sync for forever. I changed the name of a Scrivener file a little while ago. Changed the name. And I, I went in and it said 2,400 file syncing in Dropbox. And I couldn't work on it because 2,400 fucking files had to sync between me and Sean because I changed the name of the master document. So that sort of shit goes away once we have writer and everything is fully collaborative with a web app. Yeah, I, I, one more thing on the, on the web app versus, you know, um, being able to work offline. It seems to me like the stuff that you would actually, um, that would tax that, like building characters and finding images and things like that, you would need to be online for anyway, right? And yeah, and I, I'm I'm talking more not about the uh, the building, but when, when we actually get into writer, uh, I'm thinking more of that. that yeah, I that think I that would want. Yeah, I, we will have a solution for that 
in relative short order. I mean, the, for at least the writing part, that'll be part of writer. Like day one, it may go to the rest of story shop eventually, but it's important to have that kind of offline. We've, we've already looked into it. We haven't actually mentioned explicitly, but um, story shop writer development officially began last week. So. Woo! Yeah, and it's it just just the, I guess this doesn't mean anything necessarily, but I just I'm realizing that we haven't actually pointed out that there's a whole dev team. Like it's not yeah, Seth yeah. working in his garage. Like there's a whole dev team behind yeah, we, this. I know we we don't really have time to go into any of the specifics there. Um, but but Seth, would you like to? We we so we did. Here's the short story. Here is that um, we just had so much fun building this app and so much fun with Seth. Like we we could not. Like I can't. I'm just so lucky. We are also lucky because Seth's brain works really well with Sterling and Stone brains. <laughs> like, it just does. And this was a really, really rewarding process. And the fact that we got through such trials and are all better friends than ever, the fact that we spent all that money, threw it away and started over and are just stronger than ever, I, I just, I cannot. We all got matching tattoos? Not yet. <laughs> oh, that's um, in Austin. But that's, you know, that is, that is, that's a rare thing. And so we realized that we want to build tools over and over. We are building a lot of tools together. We've actually started a separate company that Sterling and Stone um, is a partner in. And Opened the bank account yesterday. And we opened the bank account yesterday. Seth, what is the name of our new company? Money Suck. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Wizard Stick Studio. <laughs> Wizard Stick Studio. And for Which those of you... John Farago gets the uh, high five for laughing at that inside reference first yeah so um so uh story <laughs> somebody read the terms and conditions that's how they got the joke <laughs> oh, there's, is it in the terms and conditions about sean's wizard stick that his mom got oh no no i'm sorry but the, no just it a, is a, that we're wizard stick studio and that was noticed to the, in, in this in oh, the original yeah, story yeah. Shop. so those of you who get the easter egg awesome um so yeah, Wizard Stick Studio is the name of our, our company. Um, we are developing a couple of things right now. We'll tell you about those later. Um, we are unveiling um, something at the summit that I'm pretty stupidly excited about. But um, none of this is taking the place of Story Shop. Story Shop development is in full force. Like Seth said, Writer is, is in production now. Other stuff is in various stages of planning, but that's what building a studio and having a development team is all about doing the right things at the right time. And, um, you know, we spent a long time a few years ago learning to write and get books out. And this is another way of, of articulating ourselves. And this, is, this has been really, really great. So we look forward to pleasing you with delightful things for a long time to come. So I will just close this up by, um, again, if you want to see the videos, sterlingandstone.net slash story shop. You can watch the video of this episode once it's processed. You can see the background behind Seth, which looks like a blanket of like faces in hell screaming. <laughs> Seth's really? um, background are one like of my favorite. Bush. They're one of my favorite <laughs> things. They floral. change constantly. For a while, floral. every time. It looks like faces screaming. It of course like it does. It's that a says more shot. about you it's than me, Dave. Dave. Yeah, Sean <laughs> sees flowers. Dave sees faces in hell screaming. Um, wow, I feel sad for Dave right now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and if you're if you want to uh, get story shop, and let's face it, you should. Um, it's. April 4th, it's live. So that's assuming anybody who's listening on the feed, this will be live. Um, you actual people who are watching us record this as we're recording it need to wait a few days. Um, April, As of April 4th, getstoryshop.com. And if you do go there early, you just join the wait list. And the one thing I will mention just briefly is just a little tease is we're going to do a, a story shop unboxing. And um, that's going to be like within, I want to say a week after we after this episode airs on the feed. So basically the Wednesday, the second Wednesday in April of 2017, we're going to do an unboxing of Story Shop um, live. You know, it'll be like a yeah, video. and an unboxing will be just like it'll be a little bit like what we did with Fiction Unbox. We'll just be fucking around and making a um, a world. Um, and I don't know, we're maybe make a world. Yeah, we're gonna make a world live. It'd be fun. Um, um, this, I don't know, Seth. Can we make that a, a read only thing for people who attend? I guess I should ask that later we'll figure that out later don't yeah. don't don't put demands on now but that's um that's for story shop uh members so that if you're basically if you're if you're in story shop either as a kickstarter backer um or somebody who you know gets in later then you you'll can you can join us for that it's not like just public open whatever it's for story shop people 
So um, again, get storyshop.com and we hope to see you guys in there and get you playing with StoryShop, all that. So good. So this has been Self Publishing Podcast. Thanks so much, Seth, for everything. But thanks it, for having me, guys. Thank you for coming to us live from hell. From hell. <laughs> live from that hell. That the devil. If those are all people screaming behind him, is he their like <laughs> keeper? Yes. Wow. All right. Thanks, everybody. Get storyshop.com. <laughs>